Man, this video sounds like clickbait. But I assure you, it's not. Probably. Look who's coming out of hibernation to give you this sick art info. As an SFM artist who is slowly edging his way into an actual draw painty dude, I have discovered something very important. Shapes and their negative shapes. Oh, some people don't know what that is. Hmm. Okay, well, you'll just have to reschedule some of the scenes. Okay, go, 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 go. Anyway, while he gets that sorted out, let's talk about what will be taken away from this video. You will learn the art of how to bring real artistic structure to your SFM posters and even your drawings. But I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you wouldn't really be a... Uh... We ready yet? To bring it down to a simple level, different shapes have different levels of what artists refer to as appeal, meaning they like the subject. It might be for the sake of expression or emotion, but to be fast about it, it's what an artist calls shape language. And I'm not going to go into that because I have a feeling that might be a bit too complex for beginner <laughs> SFM users. <laughs> I'm sorry. Instead, I'll say this. The shapes, as in your character in your scene, assuming that's the main focus, of course, which, you know, could be applied to anything, has a silhouette. The readability of that subject, and or its silhouette, and how it makes the viewer feel about it is very important. Moving on, how do we use these shapes? Negative shapes are essentially the foreground, or whatever's not a main subject. The amount of this space shown in the relationships to the main figure, or figures, is just as or could be more important than the figure itself. If this is confusing to anyone, don't worry, I'll break it down with this example. Here we have a scout sitting down. I'm using a fairly typical SFM language here. You know, your standard like, hi, I'm right here, but I'm not taking up too much space, but I'm not really far away. I think it's because we're told at a young age to get the entire body, or at least not to crop out the head when taking a photo. Now, without changing the pose, let's reposition the camera. This is now a wide shot composition now, greatly differentiating itself from the previous render. The wide negative shape changes the scale of what we sensed in the scene before. It makes us feel if the world is open and shifting the focus of what the viewer sees. I should probably clarify the value or contrast between the figure and the foreground will depict if your subject is visible to the viewer as the main focal point. Make sure not to mess this up, it's pretty important. Although we SFM users usually blur out the background, so that's fine I guess. A painter's way of seeing good value is to squint your eyes to see if things are blurry. Or, you know, you can actually blur it, but there's that option too. <laughs> if you can see the pose of your character while that's going on, your values are good. If it just looks like a red or blue blob, that means that there's not enough contrast. Or your pose just sucks. If your pose isn't visible because it's hunched up and overlapping with itself, that means you have to push your pose more and exaggerate it so it looks readable just by its silhouette. That's a pretty good way of looking at a good pose. Always push more expression, unless it's breaking it, then you can push it back a little bit. Now, let's zoom in a little bit. Personally, I'm a big fan of relationships that are like this, you know, big shapes and not like medium whatevers. I don't like wide body shots. <laughs> now the relationships have been reversed and the figure is taking up more space than the actual background. Now this video isn't to say which format is better, because really, that they're all equal, but different situations will benefit depending on the mood you are going for in your poster. Now let's go over some common mistakes that people tend to make. Compositionally, you don't always want to line things up with each other. Offsetting things just a little bit goes a long way, especially with the hand. The hand should never really be the same height unless there's a reason for it. Speaking of things lining up, if you have something line up with each other and overlap incorrectly like so, your image will become confusing because the viewer won't know what to look at first and it'll all just be like, oh look it's an arm and oh look there's a gun there, that's, are they holding, no that's someone, oh, okay. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go back to Overwatch. Thanks for watching, and I hope you were able to... <laughs> and I hope you were able to think of some clever compositions in your SFM posters. Gonna be honest, compared to last year, I don't have much SFM tutorials in my head. Still got a few small ones here and there, but I was hoping to branch out into more storytelling and general entertainment type content as time goes on. I hope you guys are excited for that like I am, but... Until those days come along, if you have a good video idea, I may or may not do it, but, you know, there's always a chance. <laughs> um, you know, yeah.
Okay, have a nice day. Bye.